Welcome to Rogue Trader. Please read the disclaimer and remember that prices can go down as well as up. Hello and welcome to my first stock update for 2021, which is going to be on Frontier Developments PLC. Those of you who saw my year in review video will know that Frontier Developments accounted for 70% of my profits last year. So the main purpose of this update is to check up on them and decide if I want to sell them now to lock in all those gains or maybe just sell half or to keep them if they're still looking good. So Frontier Developments are the UK's largest video game producer and publisher. They are famous by David Brabant, who is their CEO and also the inventor of the game Elite back in 1984. This is the main base for this company's operations. They run a game called Elite Dangerous, where you go around in spaceships shooting at each other, which is really quite an amazing game in its own right. We can see here from the number of players, which I've taken from Steam data, that Elite Dangerous has maintained a large number of players, around 5,000 at any given time. So this has only been boosted by the COVID situation. And they get money not just from selling game units, but also from selling in-game content. They then came out with a game called Planet Coaster, which is their own IP. Planet Coaster certainly does make a contribution, but nowhere near the same as Elite Dangerous. And they had their first IP franchise release with Jurassic World Evolution. This came out in 2018. As you can see, it sold absolutely blockbuster numbers. But because it's IP... They take a smaller cut of the profits. And then last year they came out with Planet Zoo, which is again completely their own IP. So Planet Zoo did really well. Um, it had 1 million sales already in just the first few months. And this is certainly a good, good addition to their portfolio. And just before I initially bought the stock in April last year, they had announced a deal with Formula One, which I had called at the time a license to print money. But actually, in researching this video, I found out that I was quite wrong there, and I'll come into that later. Since doing that video, where the share price has actually gone up two and a half fold, they also signed a, a deal. They also signed a deal with Warhammer, which does which does promise to be quite a blockbuster game. So this was the situation when I first looked at this stock, and I go into quite a lot of detail if you go and look at the video I did on them then. In this time, they had launched Elite Dangerous, launched Planet Coaster, and then Tencent, which are a huge Chinese software company, bought 10% of the shares of Frontier Developments. And the share price, it went up to a very high level, but then kind of consolidated at around 5x their traditional value down here. Then they'd launched only in 2019 Planet Zoo, plus they'd announced they were going to start publishing other people's games for a bit of extra cash. And they'd just announced a four year Formula One deal. And this was the time when I analysed this stock. And to me, this was all amazing up new, you know, this was all amazing news for future growth. So I very enthusiastically made my investments back last April. It turned out to be a very good investment. So here's when I made that video and then made a purchase. And their share price has gone up two and a half fold since then. Soon after I made that video, they announced this new deal with Games Workshop. And then they announced a COVID trading update where they revealed that their sales and the people playing their games had seen a bit of a surge because of the corona lockdown. You can see here the corona lockdown back last April, and you can see how Elite Dangerous, Planet Zoo, and the other games to a smaller extent, really did. there really was an uptick in people playing these games during the lockdown. They then announced in June that they were going to do a Space Legs update for the Elite game. So here on YouTube, you can see their trailer for this Space Legs update. Now there's actually massive anticipation in the world, in the gaming world for a space game where you also can go around running around shooting people in first person as well. There's this game called Star Citizen, 
that's just had absolute massive coverage for many years, a massive fan base where you can go around in first person, but it's really buggy and looks like it will never become a real game. There's a big pent up demand for this. And by ex by expanding their existing game to allowed first person, there really is severe potential for elite for frontier developments to make a lot of money from this space legs update. They then announced that they were going to release Planet Coaster on Xbox and PS5. And a, a general theme with Frontier Developments, if you look here where I put together their games profile, they're really good at, um, even after the initial release, they still get more life out of the products, generally by then launching them on consoles. They then produced in late August another update where they actually confirmed and now this is even before the 2020 results come out. And in this update, they confirmed that the analyst estimates for 2021 would meet their estimates of 90 million plus. Now, a big worry for me, as you'll see in the original video I did, was although in the future they were going to make loads of money when the Formula One game came out, plus the Warhammer game, plus this extra secret licensed IP game. We know that there'll be loads of money coming out then. But my big question is, what about the stopgap between now and then? And if we look at this trading update they did, they're quite clear that in full year 21, they believe they're going to meet the analyst projections. So that's really good because it de-risked that concern I had about the stopgap in between. Having said that, I did consider these estimates with all this new stuff going on to be a little bit reserved. But I'll get on to that in a moment when I talk about my big revelation around the Formula One deal. They did announce also in this trading update that they were going to release Jurassic World Evolution on Nintendo Switch. Then at the end of September, we had the uh, 2020 full year results, which had no surprises. And then finally, only a few days ago, while I was preparing this update video, they came out with a very interesting trading update. Now, in this trading update, they revealed that trading in the current financial year is ahead of the original expectations. And also said that the full year 21 data would be in the targeted range of 90 to 95 million. However, they said that the space legs release is going to be delayed. So it's only going to come in now right at the very end of the financial year. Now, with this Space Legs or the Elite Dangerous Odyssey release, it was initially supposed to happen well before the end of full year 21, but it seems like it's going to be a couple of months delayed. So it will only catch the, perhaps the, the last month of full year 21 in terms of income from that game. And then they're actually going to delay the PlayStation and Xbox releases right now into full year 22. Now, first reaction when that news came in, which was on this candle here. I've here, I've used the Yahoo website to uh, show the chart for Frontier Development in reaction to this news. And at first glance, that news release was bad news. Oh no, the Space Legs release is going to be late. And the share price did drop 5% on that news, but it seems to be, it, but it does seem to have recovered from that fairly quickly. So indeed, I was a little bit panicked when I saw that news. But when you think about it, and um, here, I put it, here I put together the money I expected to come in in the 2021 interims and then the 2021 final results. What's happened is, is the massive boost in sales from the Space Leg release is now mostly shifted into the 2022 financials. And what this means is they've still managed to meet the analyst estimates of over 90 million, even without the Space Legs on the Elite Dangerous. So this shows that their, their sales generally have been performing very well. So although this news release did look really bad at first impression, 
it's actually really good news for frontier developments and shareholders so the share price was up two and a half x and i really need to decide whether i lock in some or all of those profits or continue to hold and i found myself going down the path of of uh, valuating from trying to consider their earnings so really the question for me is how realistic were these were these um, estimates and in fact they kind of looked fairly subdued when i was thinking about the the f1 deal and then as i did the research for this i made a big revelation surrounding the uh, f1 deal because i'd assumed that this was the formula one game licensed with the formula one company but actually to my horror i discovered that um, i mean here's the uh, formula one website and they have they have a whole gaming tab as part of their way of making money and um in that you see they have a formula one 2020 game now this is the formula one racing game i was thinking of but then they also have a formula one manager game and it's this formula one manager game that frontier developments have got the rights to help uh, franchise a game for so when i discovered that that was a bit of a shock to me because it meant this formula one game wasn't the massive massive blockbuster i was expecting but at the same time it did also make sense of why these numbers seemed smaller than i was expecting so what i did is i went through and actually it's very hard to there's no segmental analysis in the frontier development yearly reports so that you know they made this many million from this game and this many million from that game it's really hard to pick out and eke out how much money do they actually make from each game in a particular year however from using their trading updates uh, they do say how many units they've sold so i was able to use that information to try and track sales very crudely for each game and then the one other clue that i got was in their annual report frontier developments revealed that 40 percent of their sales were from planet zoo last year so i was able to use that information as well and very roughly estimate the sales i expect they'll get from each of the games bearing in mind that there's going to be perhaps a month of space legs in 2021 full year and then a big bulk of that in 2022 introducing consoles to planet coaster nintendo switch for um, the uh, jurassic world game and then lower expectations for the uh, formula one sales plus we know we've got these um we've now got this secret ip franchise and the games workshop game these analyst estimates then do look kind of quite reasonable and we look at they look fairly likely so i was again trying to then make you know sense of the valuation and and I think I regard that this this 1000 level here that they were probably fairly valued then and the price has three up three x up since then and I was looking at the different times and comparing the how the share price and the revenues had changed and I ended up focusing on the 2019 time point and 2023 time point where we see the share price has gone up 3x as of now but the expected revenues are only going to double in 2023 in the future not now so then looking at the other thing the operating profits and the the net assets 
it left me feeling that overall, um, you know, when I looked at the, ov the overall picture as well of how much stronger their, their overall pipeline is, it left me feeling that they're probably fairly valued now at the 3x share price from this thousand level given what we expect in 2023 it was interesting that the equity of frontier development is only valued at around 97 million which is mostly retained earnings and a share capital and premium account and I think that that's probably quite characteristic of a tech stock. They don't really have much in, case, in terms of uh, costs for running the business and capex. Really, there's lots of cash coming in from selling the games, but not much in terms of capex and running costs to generate that money. So I think um, that's why with tech stocks, they tend to be valued. They tend to be valued more on their forward forward revenues than on, say, their assets, which would be the case with, for example, a commodity stock. So I think this valuation approach, although please remember I'm a total amateur as always, seems value seemed reasonable. Well, I looked at a couple of other software companies, Sumo and Codemasters. And their price to earnings ratio are 50 and 42, whereas Frontier Development is 83. So looking at the expected future revenues for Frontier Developments, which we have the analyst estimates here based on these new games. Well, if there's going to be a 2x in revenues, then that would then bring the price to earnings ratio down to about 40. So in that respect, the price to earnings ratio, although high, does look quite reasonable compared with these other benchmark companies, especially when from doing a bit of research, these companies, their future income is a lot less certain and they're kind of a bit scrappy as stocks. Whereas with Frontier Developments, we've got a good, we've got reasonable confidence about their future revenues. Now, on the London Stock Exchange, you can get these valuation tear sheets for the different companies. And using this for a quick guide for valuation is maybe a little expensive, but similar to Codemasters and Sumo Group. We see the price to book is fairly expensive, but actually similar to Codemasters and a bit more than uh, Sumo. Now, unfortunately for these criteria here, now, unfortunately for this tear sheet, we only have the leisure goods to compare with. But we see the price to earnings is a little bit more than leisure goods. And I've also done the, I manually did the price to earnings down here and you can see it's kind of fairly priced now if you consider the the jam in uh, 2023 against sumo and codemasters the enterprise value is good against leisure goods goods price to book shit half that of leisure goods and the price to sales a little expensive but then two years from now that will be halved to 7.5 if the step if the share price stays the same so overall, I'm fairly comfortable with the share price being reasonable and these future revenues being reasonable. And in the future, it's a case of will space legs on Elite Dangerous be a disaster or any of these games, in which case that will affect the, the company negatively. Or could it be that the Warhammer game, for example, or the Space Legs are a mega hit and we just see a rocketing up in players. In which case that could actually convert this stock back into a runaway train category. So just to, go, just to quickly go into the numbers, even after the 2020, which I hadn't done uh, last time, a real solid profit and loss statement. This company has a long history of generating additional cash and net income 
every year ka-ching ka-ching the only thing is we just got to keep an eye on their running costs their r d and their admin and sales and marketing but certainly it's well in control as of now there was a lovely widening of their income and expenditure in 2019 which has been maintained so that looks good and they really are a very pleasing to the eye assets assets and debt profile cash is 45 million it's approximately a third of their assets in total and half of their net assets so that is really nice a massive wedge of cash this is just the kind of stock i like and virtually no debt this lease liability that's a bit of a accounting artifact that has to come in with these new uh, ifrs accounting standards but it's the same for all companies but apart from that no debt practically no debt at all something different from my last video is i'm now doing is I, as i'm now taking a look at the consolidation statement of cash flows which gives a nice additional insight into how healthy the company is and how the money's sloshing around which kind of tells you how the money how the company kind of works and this is this is miles better than any of the other companies i've done this for to date we can see that from their normal operating activities they generate 32.4 million in cash and yet they're only having to spend 21 million on that on research and development and 0.6 million on capex the r d to me is my interpretation has been that's basically paying people to code and managing all that and then there's some miscellaneous finance stuff going on and they have to pay rent on their big new building they've bought which is 1.6 million a year so then overall they've got 33 million coming in and it's so simple with frontier developments you know the only income really of any significance is their cash from normal operations of 32.4 million nice and simple and then their outgoings are really nice and simplified here as 0.6 million for capex hardly anything 1.6 million for paying rent minor amount and 21 million for all the coders so that's how they then they so that's how they then end up with 10 million of cash to put in the bank ka-ching every year really really pleasing to the eye when you look at how the cash flows around in this company so the way i feel about frontier developments having to look at them again and now that they've even affirmed their full year 21 results and then looking at what they've got in the pipeline up to 2023 i definitely still want to be in them i think i may lock in half of the money i made last year by selling half but a little reluctantly and what i think i'll do is i'm going to i'm going to set in a trailing stop loss so to me they're kind of it being in a channel and there's a bit of a big bull flag here before then they continued going up and then they just had that news which lots of people reacted badly to but we still seem fairly okay here it could go up it's kind of consolidating it could go up could go down but I, I like the idea of protecting half my winnings as I said, they were 70% of last year's profits, and it'd be nice to lock that in. But I'm very reluctant to sell them. So I think a nice trailing stop loss, probably 2,900 down here. So that would then be a serious kind of drop through this bull flag here and a serious trend down. You know, maybe there'd be a big stock market crash overall or something. Uh, you know then, and then i would um then i would lock in half but i think the share price is likely to keep on going sideways or actually continue on a bull run actually um i think they're kind of fairly valued now but it's just a case of 
how are the stock markets behaving more and how is this sector looked at so yeah i'm thinking of protecting with a very generous trailing stock loss but as the share price kept on climbing i'll move up that stop loss but only very gradually because really i want to hold on to them if i can at the end of the day i have established that their current price is fair value and i do have massive winnings from this stock already that it would be good idea to, to lock in some of that so to summarize they're an amazing company with a solid past history solid books and loads of cash their share price has gone up two and a half x since i started since i was first invested in april 2020. i've decided that i will hold but sell half with a very very generous trailing stop loss they are still solid with a better pipeline than when i first bought into them to my disappointment the formula one game i realized in doing this video is only the management game and not the main racing game which is actually licensed to codemasters till 2025 this however does explain why the analyst estimates look tame to me and we do know that actually those are fairly reasonable estimates and that the current share price is reasonable based on that the stock at its current price is at the end of the day the stock at the current price is i think fairly priced if everything pans out till 2023 in order for it to become a runaway train again we'd want either elite dangerous with space legs to become a mega hit which is certainly possible but you never know it could bomb as well or perhaps the Warhammer game becoming a mega hit or also if there's new games added to their pipeline but you have to question how practical that is how more you know I'm not sure how quickly the business can expand after it's already expanded to a headcount of over 500 so in conclusion I decided to put in a very generous trailing stop loss starting at the 290 price and then sell half to lock in the massive two and a half gains with review to retaining the rest anyway for the long term now here on the london southeast website i've been maintaining my overall positions and you can say you can see that we had a bad day today and you you can see here also my my watch list but what i've been doing is i have an excel spreadsheet where i list my current ideas and there's some things here that you're going to start seeing some videos on soon i then have my watch list and for each stock i have a list of criteria i need before going in which i present at the end of each video and then i also importantly have my current portfolio which you see here and what's important is to keep tabs is to when I first invest in a stock lay out what is my thought process and what is my strategy for this stock and what are my risks so I've updated here for frontier developments and it's very important that I regularly keep track of the stocks and check against my risk factors and timings and strategy for each, for each of the stock in my portfolio and whenever if one of them no longer matches why I originally invested in them then I'll sell them and they go out but of course in, in terms of frontier developments I only plan to sell half of them which will actually be the same value as I hold for the two other stocks that are equity plays in my portfolio anyway so so yeah so that's how i'm i've been managing that in a good controlled way so it was really fun to do this update they are an excellent stock that i think are fairly priced at the moment and there's so many exciting things that are going to happen in the future with them
it's going to be good fun continuing to track the progress of frontier developments hopefully for many years and good luck to all of you who are frontier development shareholders and good luck to all of you who are fans of elite dangerous